Goal! Nice shot, man. Hey, Haley. Hey, guys. What's up? What are you doing? Look at them play. They are so good. I just can't wait till I'm on the field and just go mm, right in the, in wow. the, the net. Yeah. Wow. Um, are you going to watch church this weekend? Because we wanted to watch it together. Yeah, we have like, my um, mom made pancakes. Yeah. And bacon. I can't. The game's right at when service is, so I can't. I just can't. Wait, so you're not going to watch service at all? No, I can't. Because, you know, I have to watch my soccer games or I'm not going to be as good. Are, are you sure? Yeah, I'm super sure, actually. Okay. Well, if you want to come and you do end up coming, me and Kendall are going to make breakfast and we're going to have a lot of fun and we're going to watch Pastor Chad speak. With pancakes. Pancakes. All right. Well, we're going to go now. Okay, bye, guys. Bye. Hi boys and girls, Teacher Kendall here, and today's Ponder Point is the Most High God. And we can find our memory verse for today in Proverbs 16, dot, dot, nine. So let's all stand up and go through the motions together. And we're going to run through it twice. In their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. Proverbs 16, dot, dot, nine. Awesome job, now let's run through it just one more time. In their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. Proverbs 16, dot, dot, nine. Awesome job, boys and girls. Now let's get straight into worship.
closer to Christmas. Yes! Oh, right. Oh, sorry. Um, anyway, on today's show, we're going to be talking about the Most High God through the tale of Elijah and Mount Carmel. Carmel? Or is it caramel? Caramel. Ah, this stuff is delicious. That reminds me. I wonder if Megabyte has cooked up anything with caramel in the kitchen. <clears throat> hey, everybody. Welcome back to Cooking with Megabyte. Again, I got my special guest here. Uh, who's dancing around. His name is Ninja Warrior. Ninja Warrior, say what's up to all the viewers out there. What's up? What's up, he said. Anyways, come on up here because I'm going to need you to help me out. All right? So today, uh, hopefully, just like um, Isaiah got saved last week from Cameron, uh, he was able to eat the sandwich and Isaiah couldn't. But maybe today, uh, God will save him. Because today we're talking about how God saves, okay? And we've got another dish for you. As a matter of fact, it's uh, macaroni and cheese. You, who loves macaroni and cheese? You love macaroni and cheese? Oh, he does. Okay, we're gonna find out. So, I just pulled it out of the oven. Oh yeah, there we are. Ready to go. Mmm. All right, look at that, nice and steamy. And we have a special ingredient today. Who loves crab? Mmm, so good. He does? Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and open this up, just like that. We're gonna put pieces of crab in it. You wanna break it up nice and fine so that every bite gets a piece, just like that. Here, you wanna tear some? Go ahead, go ahead, do that one. You wanna taste it? Nope, he doesn't like it. All right, that's flavor, we love it. Okay, here we go. We're gonna grab our spoon, and we're gonna go ahead and toss this up a little bit, just like that. Look at that macaroni. Doesn't that look beautiful? It looks good, huh? Okay. Now we're gonna go ahead and plate it. Right there in the middle, just like that. We should give Isaiah some? Okay. That worked for me. Just like that. Now, what's our special sauce? What's it called? Chocolate sauce is what he said. That's right. He got it. Here we go. Little chocolate sauce on it. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And whipped cream. Whip cream. Shake it up. Just like that. What a masterpiece this is. All right. Would you call Isaiah in for us, please? Isaiah. Come on. He's thinking again. All right, Isaiah. We have a beautiful masterpiece. How much do you love mac and cheese? He loves it, he said. Okay, here you go. Be our taste tester there. Right. Have a good little piece. Ooh, yeah. Make sure you show our viewers at home. There you go, look at that. He's got a beautiful piece there. And tell me how this professional chef Megabyte did. This mac and cheese, I give it two thumbs up. Two thumbs up, that's right, yeah! That's right, my best dish so far. Well, thank you, Isaiah, and thank you at home for watching. As a matter of fact, you're gonna learn an incredible story today uh, about how God saves his people. Pastor Chad, take it on over. Hey guys, welcome back to Week in Service. Pastor Chad here with you again. So happy to be here. Hey, you know what? Um, we have an incredible, incredible story today for you, a true story in the Bible. Uh, this is my favorite story, as a matter of fact, and so I am honored and privileged to be able to tell it to you. And I really hope you pay attention and you really grasp the story here behind it. And today we're going to be talking about how God, He is the Most High God. There is nobody above Him. There is nobody even close to Him. He rules. He is the ultimate Most High hi God. That's right. And so we get to uh, talk about this today. And um, of course, um, you know, that guy Megabyte, he needs a lot of help. He's working on his recipes. I don't know where he's getting his recipes from, but uh, must be some weird cooking book or whatever you want to call it. But anyways, um, you know, I, it just makes me think here, you know, throughout the big God story that we've been talking about, you know, God revealed himself to the Israelites, Israelites as Yahweh. Okay. And um, that meaning the Lord, the one true God who is the most high God. And the name Yahweh means I am who I am, which is another way of saying the one who 
uh, has always existed. And in the Old Testament of the Bible, whenever you see the word Lord capitalized all the way across with all capital letters, you are seeing God's name, Yahweh. You see, God has no beginning, he has no end, he is infinite, and his character never changes because he never changes. So let's ask God to show us today that he is the one true God, the most high God. And we're gonna pray right now as he shows us and he teaches us through his story. So Father, thank you for bringing us together. Lord, we thank you for this time. And yes, Lord, we may be online, but to all those that are watching and can hear the sound of my voice, Lord, we pray that you would penetrate our hearts and every device that we're listening on. And God, that we would have an encounter with you. Let our hearts be open, let our ears and our minds be receptive to what you have and let your will be done in our lives in Jesus' name. Well, I'm excited for this. Um, you know, this is the last week, the last weekend in November, and we're moving right into December. And you know what that means, right? That's right, Christmas time. Woo! I'm excited. I can't wait for our Christmas series. It'll be coming in uh, next week, um, and it's gonna be a lot of fun. So make sure you tune in. Uh, you don't want to miss out. Even if you show up to on uh, in-person services, I would still tune in to our online because you don't want to miss out on all the fun. So today we're gonna to see that Yahweh is the most high God. And through a story that involves a man, uh, he's a prophet named Elijah. Now Elijah being this prophet, he lived during a time when Israel was no longer united. It actually had split into two countries, Israel and Judah. And the Northern Kingdom of Israel and its kings had continually disobeyed God by worshiping the little G's, the little gods, false gods. And when God had told them to only worship him, hmm, kind of like when our parents tell us to only do something certain and we don't do it, right? Well, that's exactly what they were doing. In fact, Jezebel, the queen of Israel during Elijah's day wanted everyone to worship this false God, Baal, but instead of the real true God. Yeah, th th this guy, Baal, he was nothing. He was false. There was nothing real about him. And here, this, the queen of Israel, Jezebel, wants everyone to worship this guy instead of who? The, yeah, the real God, Yahweh. So God wanted his people to know that he is the most high God. So he had his prophet Elijah set up a contest to show everyone that Yahweh alone is that one true God. You ever been to a contest before? You ever been in a contest? That's right, you always have a winner, you have a loser, right? No ties, no ties. So listen to what Elijah said to King Ahab, 1 Kings 18, 19 through 20. Now summon the people from all over Israel to meet me on Mount Carmel and bring the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Asherah who eat at Jezebel's table. Hmm, at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent word throughout all Israel and assembled the prophets on Mount Carmel. Okay, so Elijah, the Israelites, and the 850 false prophets came together on Mount Carmel. There, each side would choose an offering. Uh, they would make an altar with stones and wood and pray that fire would come down from heaven and burn up the sacrifice. Only the Most High God would be powerful enough to do that, right? So the prophets of Baal went first. They prayed for hours. They chanted, oh, la, 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 la. they begged, please, 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 please. And they cried out to their false God. Oh. All morning, they tried to get their false God to answer their prayers. And at noon, Elijah teased them. As a matter of fact, this is what Elijah said, 1 Kings 18, 27. At noon, Elijah began to taunt them. Shout louder, he said, surely he is God. Perhaps he's in a deep thought or busy or maybe he's traveling. Maybe he's sleeping and he must be awakened. You see, Baal's prophets tried even harder. They ripped their clothes and even hurt themselves, all in an effort to get their false god Baal's attention. But verse 29 says this, that there was no response. Nobody answered, no one paid attention. And the prophets of Baal, they had no results. No, 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 no. Then Elijah comes in and builds an altar with 12 stones. 
the kind of altar Yahweh wanted, right? He placed the sacrifice on the altar and poured water on it. As a matter of fact, he poured so much water over the sacrifice that the water soaked up the wood and filled a trench that he had built around the altar. Now, Elijah, he was going all out here. He was gonna make a spectacle and show these people what's up, right? So then Elijah prayed, Lord, let it be known today that you are God in Israel. Answer me so these people will know that you, Lord, are God and that you are turning their hearts back again. And immediately, boom, God answered. This is what happened. In 1 Kings uh, 18, verse 38 says, then the fire of the Lord fell and burned up the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, and the soil, and it also licked up the water in the trench. Whoa, this is crazy. How would you feel if you saw that happen? Um, yeah, I would probably fall to my knees, wouldn't you? Well, that's exactly what happened. Can you just imagine sitting there, seeing fire come down from heaven, it consumed the rocks, which in reality, if you think about it, like rocks, like you can put them around a fire and they, they don't do nothing. Um, the wood, yes, but it was drenched with water. Trying to burn wet wood is so hard, it's almost impossible. And not only that, but remember the, the trench around it that was full of water? The fire came in and licked it all up. Wow, that's crazy. But see, the thing is, is everybody fell on their knees and said, the Lord, he is God. You'd think that afterward, everyone would have wanted to worship Yahweh, that one true God. But it wasn't that way for everyone. When Jezebel heard what had happened, Queen Jezebel didn't like it at all. As a matter of fact, she was so upset that she threatened to kill Elijah. So Elijah ran for his life. And after more than 40 days of travel, Elijah came to a cave in a mountain named Horeb. Horeb was another name for Mount Sinai, where God met with Moses and the Israelites many years before. Elijah, he was hungry. Can you imagine that? 40 days? Man, I'd be hungry. He was exhausted. He was lonely. Let's see what happens in 1 Kings 19.10. The Bible tells us in 1 Kings 19.10, it says, He replied, I have been very very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. You see, Elijah had seen God's fierce display of power at Mount Carmel. But in this moment, Elijah needed comfort. And because God is a loving God, he answered Elijah's prayer but this time in a very, very different way. Verse 11 tells us this. The Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. God told Elijah, go out and stand on the mountain, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore through the mountains and it tore them apart and shattered the rocks. But the Lord was not in the wind. Then the great earthquake shook everything, but the Lord, no, he wasn't in the earthquake. And next, there was a fire, but again, the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire came, shh, did you hear that? It was a gentle whisper. You see, Elijah knew the gentle whisper was God. So Elijah went out on the mountain to speak with Yahweh, the Lord God. God comforted Elijah and told him what to do next, to anoint future kings and to train the next prophet, Elisha. And through the whisper, Yahweh, God himself showed up, the God who has all power, but who is also gentle and loving. And throughout this part of the Big God story, we saw the Lord God communicating with his people in very different ways. We heard how he sent an all-consuming fire, bringing glory to himself and calling his people back to him. And we also heard how he spoke softly to his servant Elijah through a whisper. And like he was in the time 
of Elijah. Yahweh is God and in our lives today. He is the one who is powerful. He loves us, he protects us, he deserves our worship and he comforts us. And in everything we need, in every part of our life, Yahweh is the one true God. Would you like to make Yahweh a part of your life? Just like he did for Elisha, for Elisha he can do for you. And just like he did for these prophets, he could do for you. And what was that? To save you. And that's only done through Jesus. Do you need a miracle today? And just like the miracle on Mount Carmel with Elijah and God sending fire down from heaven, maybe you need that miracle. Let me pray for you. Father, I just pray right now that whoever's listening at the sound of my voice, whoever's with us right now on that device, God, that you would bless them. Lord, whatever they're going through right now, I pray that you would relieve them from it. You would bless them, you would protect them, and you would heal them. Lord, we trust you and we believe that you're in control. We love you, Yahweh, the most high God, in Jesus' name. Hey, I wanna say a prayer with you, and if you've never accepted Jesus before, Jesus wants to come into your life. All you gotta do is open your heart, and you might say, how do I do that? Well, that's letting everything go and letting him in. And a lot of times we harbor unforgiveness, we hold bad things within us, and God wants us just to release it. And all he wants to do is take that place. Will you let him take that place today? If you've never accepted Jesus into your life in a relationship for the first time today, make that decision. We're gonna pray one more prayer. And I want you to pray this prayer with me if you wanna accept Jesus. Repeat after me, Father God, thank you for this day. And Jesus, I am a sinner. I need your forgiving. So please forgive me, Lord, for all that I've done. Cleanse me and purify me. Fill me with your spirit. Tell me what to do, Lord, because I'm all yours. In Jesus' name, amen. What an amazing story, right? God never fails. He always comes through when we need him. And remember, all those false gods out there will never be able to do anything for you like God will, the one true God, Yahweh. Let him in, let him protect you. Hey, remember we have that connect card. Make sure you connect with us. Let us know if you accepted Christ. Shoot us a, 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 a little message box there. If you need a Bible or if you got a prayer request or a praise report, we wanna celebrate and share with you and pray with you. And remember, we got kids services going on. Christmas is here, we got some special things happening. So make sure you stay tuned and see all the good stuff that is coming up for our V1 kids. And here at Visalia First, I couldn't be more proud and honored to be serving and to be here with you speaking the word of God. So until we see you next time, December's rolling around the corner, it's right here. We love you guys, we're praying for you, and we'll see you next week. Hey guys. Hey Haley. I'm sorry that I was always concentrating on soccer. I'm really glad my mom made me go watch service with you guys. Yeah, it was so fun. Yeah, I'm really glad that you were able to hear Pastor Chad speak. And what was his message? It was something that pertained to you, right? Yeah, it yeah. made me think of you. Yeah, I realized that I was putting soccer above the only person I shouldn't be putting it above, which is God. And Pastor Chad's sermon really showed me that. Yeah, he was talking about how God is the most high. So when we put like worldly things above him, it's just, it's not right. So I'm so happy that you got to learn that um, from all of this and that your mom did make you come because we had a lot of fun, right? And you got to eat pancakes. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I want more pancakes. Yes. We should go make some more. Let's go make some more. Yeah. Yes. And bacon. Yes. Bye, boys and girls. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next weekend.